Hey guys, how's it going? It's AC Milan MTL here, and today I'm here to talk to you about match number four in the 2013-2014 Serie A season, the match between Milan and Napoli that was played at the San Siro in Milan. Very important match for Milan today as they needed the three points in order to get closer to the other uh, group of teams. As we know, uh, Roma, Inter, Juve and Fiorentina all had won their games in this match. Therefore, Milan did need the three wins in order to get closer. And Napoli in this game needed to do the same thing to catch league leaders Roma. Uh, so they needed to get the three points in this game and also to keep their record intact without any losses or draws. The game ended 2-1 for Napoli. As usual, I'm going to be talking to you about the match in general, including player performances, uh, match events, and my personal opinion on certain things that I saw in this game. So let's get started right from the beginning, where Milan was caught sleeping in the first 5 minutes. Uh, really, really sleeping, because Napoli had 3 or 4 chances in the first few minutes, and then in the 6th minute... Um, Napoli did score on a set piece, what a surprise, uh, a set piece where once again Milan awful in the marking, Britos at an open net really, and uh, would be really hard to miss from there, but he did not, and he put uh, Napoli up front by a goal in the 6th minute, so already at the beginning of the match, huge blow for Milan, and they were already uh, uh, losing at that moment. Anyways, let's get continue in the game. Um, today we saw once again Biersa playing this game, as we had seen against Celtic. We saw him start in this game again, and he did show some good things. Uh, he had some good corners in this first half of the game, and he did show some good things. Uh, however, what Milan was really missing in the first half, uh, at least, was the finishing touch. Um, I find Balotelli and Matri were linking up well, especially in the first half. Um, however, the fishing touch wasn't there. So many times we came uh, to, to Napoli's net and we just uh, overplayed it, I find. We couldn't get shots in and uh, that was one of the problems in the first half. Uh, we also, as I said before, defense completely horrendous. Once again, calling out Galliani on this one. Um, as I said last week, I can't believe he still says that the defense is all right as it is. And uh, really, I don't understand if he's blind or not because he might be good in the market. He might be making these last minute deals, but you really have to be blind not to see how shit, and excuse the expression, how shit this Milan defense is. Completely awful. Seven goals in four games, guys. Seven goals in four games where top teams have been conceding one or three goals in these first four games. We can see here Roma and Inter conceding only one goal in four games and their attack is explosive with 10, 13 goals respectively. We have Napoli and Juve with three goals apiece uh, against. So really, I don't understand how Milan is conceding seven goals in four games Against teams that aren't even that great, we like Torino, Cagliari, and Verona. So I'm not counting really Napoli in this, but still, way too many goals against. And to tell you the truth, it's not even the goals against because if you look at it, yes, it's seven goals in four games, but it could have been way, way more than that if not for some last minute decisive um, tackling by De Jong, which brings up to my next point. Uh, Nigel De Jong, once again, great performance by him. He's always there to save the team in the back and he's forced to play deeper in that defense due to the uh, retardness of the center backs because they can't cope with themselves so De Jong needs to provide them support all the time. And this really bothers me because really if I could have I would have personally switched De Jong as a center back but then who would uh, be doing the dirty work in the mid. Anyways. Uh, this brings to a, another point where I want to be talking about the mid. Um, Allegri fielded Poli and Muntari alongside uh, De Jong playing in the middle as usual. And um, I understand perfectly Poli, but Muntari, really awful. Um, once again, he runs a lot, he puts the energy in the game. But he's not a player that should be starting games. And I keep saying it once again. 
this guy should come in as an enforcer for physical, to be physical against these teams. What I mean by this is that he should provide um, roughness, like, to play against the other teams, but he shouldn't be there as a playmaker or anyone that's useful for Milan's plays and actions. So once again, Muntari there is completely useless to me, and so is his um, compatriot over there in the back, Emmanuelson, playing as a left back, useless, useless Emmanuelson in the back there as a left back, really shouldn't be starting. I prefer seeing Costa over there for now, in the meantime, till Deshiyo comes back, and um, really awful game by Manuelson and Muntari that couldn't uh, really provide anything for the Milan team today, and uh, really, as I said before, couldn't even link up with themselves, so awful game by the left side, and if you guys noticed, we, we didn't really use that side today, once again, because obviously, uh, things aren't working on that side. And Allegri, which brings up my next point, uh, needs to see this all together. Now, talking about Allegri, uh, in the past few weeks, he's been receiving a lot of criticism, and really, I didn't make notice of it in terms of uh, yes, I didn't know there was a lot of criticism given to Allegri, but I wasn't making much deal of it until this game. And really, this game confirmed to me that uh, Allegri is either retarded or he's on some serious crack, because um, honestly, what I've seen today was unbelievable. Uh, in the second half, he made some switches, some substitutions that I couldn't even imagine. Um... So, for example, he brought in Niang for Poli, uh, Robinho for Birsa, and Noncherino for Abate. Now, let me talk about uh, the substitution, starting from the first one, which was Robinho for Birsa. And, um, I, as I said before, Birsa was playing quite well. Birsa was playing quite well, and I don't think he should have been substituted. But, at the same time, um, as I said... Milan was losing already 2-0 and they needed uh, attack up front. So in a way, I could agree with Robinho coming in. But the other two switches are completely not understandable. Niang coming in for Poli when Muntari is still on the field is honestly retarded. How could you bring in Niang for Poli instead of Muntari? When Muntari really all you need is attack up front and Poli really gives all the energy he could. All the time. While Muntari, as I said, he gives the energy but doesn't give the support up front. So right there, there's a mistake from uh, Allegri, in my opinion. Nyang should have came in for Muntari and not Poli. And once again after that, we see Nocerino coming in for Abate. At this point, really, I question myself uh, over Allegri's tactics that make no absolute sense game after game. And that, uh, as we saw before... Um, Coming in for Abate, uh, that is Nocerino. Nocerino used this player. Abate at least could use the speed to bring the ball up front. So once again, a not understandable substitution by Allegri. And um, he kept Muntari on for 90 minutes, which I still don't understand how that's even possible. Um, Want to be talking about the strikers now, fast, fast. Um, start off with Matri. Matri seems like he could do some work. Uh, however, he's not a good finisher, or at least what we have seen in these past few games. He really needs to work on his finishing, needs to be more clinical, and needs to be a bit more selfish. I find he gives away way, the ball way too much in the front at times, instead of taking his own chances, and uh, rather passes it off to other players. He needs, he's a striker, he needs to take shots, and he needs to be more clinical in front of the net. And now, finally, I want to be talking to you about Balotelli, which uh, a very unlike, unlucky game for him because um, he did miss his first ever penalty shot in career ever today. Uh, great save by Pepe Reina, give him credit on that, which he had a very good game in this one. And um, he missed his first penalty shot, a bit nervous uh, throughout the match because many times uh, he was getting fouled and the referee didn't really, um, how could I say, didn't really give anything for it, didn't give a shit about it, if you want to put in those terms, and decided to give the first yellow card to Napoli in the 85th minute, where I think there should have been at least another three before, 
but I'm not gonna get into this whole business with uh, the yellow cards, even though the referee was completely shit today. Um, but uh, Balotelli, as I said, very unlucky game. Uh, many shots saved by Reina, which I said before, had a very good performance. And in the end, got himself a beautiful goal. But um, in the final seconds of the game, actually after the game, he had a discussion with the referee over uh, some events in the game. And he got himself a double yellow card, which results in a red card. And we, he will be missing the game against Bologna. Uh, on Wednesday, which brings up my next point. My next match review will be against Bologna um, this Wednesday. So that's about it for the match review, guys. Many topics to talk about. Uh, Milan, very disastrous. Four points in four games so far. Um, I see it very difficult that Milan could be making the Champions League. I know it's very early still, but uh, right now, Milan already eight points behind league leaders Roma and Napoli. And uh, with strong competition from Inter, Juve, Fiorentina, and Roma this season, I see it very hard for Milan to even get in the top three positions. Uh, however, the season is still young, and there's a lot to play still, so we will see about this at the end of the season. Let me know your comments on this match, guys, and if you liked the video, please click on the like button. Also, if you haven't yet, please follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook for more Milan updates on a daily basis, as I always keep you guys updated. And also, don't forget to subscribe to AC Milan MTL on YouTube. This has been AC Milan MTL, you're signing off, and as usual, Forza Milan!